If you want to understand substances, we look at the unit structure. The unit structure has its own property. The structural unit of our universe are atoms. And then we said, if you want to understand chemistry, we look at behavior of electrons. So we needed to write the electron configuration of atoms to understand their property. So this is the electron configuration of atoms. And then today you are going to look at the fact that electrons, number of electrons in the outmost shell are very important in defining properties of substances. We are going to focus on that. So we said you can write number of electrons in the outmost shell, which are called valence shell. Around an element, that's enough to suggest the type of reaction you would expect from that particular atom. So here you're seeing that fluorine has got seven electrons in the second shell. And that's the outer shell. Fluorine has only two shells. So we also said number of happiness, number of stability for atom is to have eight electrons. That was one of the roots of happiness. Having eight electrons on the outer shell means the atom is happy. It's going to have electron structure of noble gas. That means losing energy and gaining a stability. Why? Because noble gases are not reactive. They are stable. They are happy as they are. So if I look at the structure of fluorine, which has got seven electrons in the valence shell, in the outer shell, in order for these electrons to become eight, there is one more electron needed. So fluorine is going to look for an electron to grab. So fluorine is going to look for an atom which is willing, which is willing to give one electron to fluorine. So in this reaction, fluorine is going to gain one electron after having eight electrons. Total number of outer shell electrons, which were seven, these are valence electrons, are now eight. And that is number of happiness. And if you write the electron configuration of neon, neon has got 10 electrons. Two of these 10 electrons are on the first shell, and eight of these electrons are on second shell. And the same thing for fluorine. Fluorine right now under this con condition this fluorine has got two electrons on the first shell and eight electrons on the second shell so do you see similarity between electron configuration of fluorine with one negative charge and neon so that's what atoms like to do they do something to gain a stability to lose energy so and that means trying to look like a noble gas last time i said if fluorine gains one electron is going to be fluoride negative charge changes the ending ide means negative charge so fluorine becomes fluoride why is this negative because before fluorine if you look at periodic table atomic number is nine it means nine protons and in a neutral atom of fluorine there are also nine electrons the total charge is zero after it gains one electron number of protons of course are not changing because we are not talking about nuclear reactions nucleus remain the same protons are the same one electron added so now in here we have got 10, 10 electrons. We have got 10 electrons here. That means 10 negative charge, total charge is negative one. So now we have got F minus, which is an ion. An ion which has negative call, ne negative charge is called an anion. F minus is called an anion with negative charge. So if I go 
to the next slide. We said, if you look at periodic table, look at group 3A, like aluminum is group 3A. Go ahead. I'm hoping that you have a copy of periodic table and you have your book ready. Next to you, if you look up there, aluminum is in group 3A. And aluminum is a main group metal. In its reaction, aluminum is going to make a L plus three. So you can predict the charge of the cations. Positive charge is cation, it's not an anion. Positively charged ions, if they are related to a main group metal, just look at group number, you can predict the charge. And then if I ask you, what charge do you expect for oxygen, which is a main group non-metal, what sort of ion do you exchange from, do you expect from oxygen? Oxygen is in group 6A. Write this number minus eight. It gives you negative two. You can put the sign after number or before. So oxygen is going to have negative two charge. Why? It's going to need two electrons. Why? Because the fact that oxygen is in group 6A, it means its electron dot formula has six electrons. Six electrons is not octet, is not eight. So oxygen needs to gain electron. So can I say metals would like to gain positive charge? Metals are electron donors. And non-metals are electron acceptor. They make negative charge. How do you predict the charge of non-metal if they are your main group non-metal, find their group number, which comes with A, minus A. That shows how many electrons they have to gain to get to the octet stability. See this hat now? It used to be six before, but now there is two more added. So you have a stability of octet. So you can predict the charges of main group metals and non-metals. If they are in group 1A, they make plus one charge. If they are group 2A, they make plus two charge. If you, they are in group 3A, like aluminum, they make plus three charge. You can also predict the charges of non-metals by looking at periodic table. Look at the column number 5A, Oh, you have to write five minus eight. So negative three, see the charges of nitrogen and phosphorus, which are in group 5A, are negative three. If it is oxygen, which is in group 6A, it really has six valence electron. It needs two more to become eight. So the charge is going to be negative two. If a non-metal is in group 7A, it has seven valence electrons. It needs one more electron to become eight, so the charge is negative one. So now you know how to determine the charge of metals and non-metals if they are main group metal. Do you understand why I'm emphasizing main group metals? Is that something that is not clear? So if they're not main group, then it doesn't work the same way? Yes. Let me see if I can have, I can answer you by using a periodic table. I thought I had a periodic table somewhere in here. I hope. 